wow, man, it's always so hard coming up with ideas for decorations around this time of year. You really want to have that holiday spirit with a really cool mix of steampunk. Only if I had a steampunk Santa Claus that I could build, that would be so cool. Hey, what's this? A present from the Moyo store? And it's a steampunk Santa Claus build? How convenient. Roll the intro. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, everybody! Welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and today's episode, we're going to be building a steampunk Santa Claus. Inside of this box is over 366 pieces of jolliness, and it comes to us from our friends at the Moyo Store. Uh, who are they? You don't know the Moyo Store? Oh, well... You should definitely check them out. They have all kinds of cool models on there, including steampunk ones and dinosaurs, and even a steampunk Santa Claus. Once you find the model on there that you're interested in building, when you go to that little checkout area, when you enter code GROOVE, you'll be saving yourself a little bit of money and also supporting the channel. I think it's a pretty cool thing. And I gotta say thank you to the Moyo Store for supporting the channel and also bringing us these really awesome builds. Now I know what you're thinking. If we have a steampunk Santa Claus, where are the steampunk reindeer? Well, we're gonna handle that. But before we do, we gotta get some other questions out of the way. Like, does this have all the tools you need to build it? What are the tricky bits? And does it actually work when it's all put together? It's supposed to have a light, you know. These are all great questions. We're gonna get the answers. Groovers, let's go ahead and open up this package. And boom, there we have it. All of our pieces needed to build our steampunk Santa Claus. I'm quite surprised with all the things we get here inside of this box. Uh, let's go ahead and go through them real quickly. I'll put this guy to the side. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is our hardware pieces here. There's quite a bit here. And in the past with some of our bigger builds, it's been a real challenge to try to keep all of these things together and not get them all mixed up. These ones seem to have really big, clear, bold lettering on them. And it also looks like no bags are sharing parts like inside of our Raptor video. Yeah, pretty good stuff. So this should be pretty easy to keep together. I might not actually organize these into the individual little trays that I have. Those can be very useful for keeping everything organized, but I really don't think I need them for this one. Let's go ahead and put these guys to the side here. Here are our tools. Let's get them out of the bag. Okay, so we get ourselves an Allen key. Uh, this is for all of our nuts. I don't typically use this one very often, but it does come in handy uh, every now and then. We also have ourselves a new looking screwdriver. This one is not adjustable. It's just a single screwdriver, Phillips head, very nice. And finally, we have the typical Moyo store yellow pliers. Very good stuff. Let's go ahead and place these guys down. I do think that's all we'll need in terms of tools. You never know though. Sometimes these things can be a little bit tricky. Finally, we get a bag of accessories here. These accessories look interesting. We get ourselves a nice little Santa belt or scarf. We have ourselves some shoes. Those look pretty awesome. And actually these shoes, if you look closely, have some actual rubber soles on them. Uh, not felt like you would see in baby shoes. These are actually rubber. Pretty cool. It's probably going to help everything stay up. We have a Santa's hat. Almost looks like a cat hat. Cool looking guitar. Now this one's red. I think the other ones I've seen are black. And it also looks like there's a little bit of a button here I can press. Whoa. Whoa, well, let's see if you can hear that. I'm going to put it near my microphone. I mean, I was expecting Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but a uh, magical guitar is still kind of interesting. Uh, let's put that down there. Uh, we got ourselves an awesome card, letting us know what we have. A USB charging cable, and oh boy. Wow, this is actually really cool. Whoa, huh, I, did, I barely even touched it. 
What's this? How's this work? Uh, touch lamp? Touch, touch. Oh, it stopped. That's neat. I wasn't expecting it to light up like that right out of the package, especially because of the fact that uh, I thought you would need to charge it. That was super bright. I mean, let's see if I can get it to go again. I touch you. Whoa, oh, it's right there on the top. There's actually a little power uh, etching there. It's definitely a little touch screen. That's really cool. Uh, can I get it to stay one color? Okay, that's like the white light. Can I get it to stay? Oh, okay, I do. Oh, this one changes colors. I'm gonna see if I can show it in the glove there and see how that changes. That's cool. All right. Okay, we got, oh, there we go. We go through all the different colors that way. Okay, now if I just hold down the power button, it should turn off. There we go. That's really neat, a cool little lamp. I wasn't expecting it to do all that, but uh, nevertheless, really cool. All right, we've gone through all of our pieces here, and now we just need to get out our first couple of parts and put them together. Uh, but before we do, we need to do one more thing, my friends, and that's for you guys to press that like and subscribe button. We're currently trying to get to 4,000 subscribers, and when you press that like button, it tells other people that this video is worth watching. And when you press the subscribe button, you need to check out on some cool projects. No pressure at all, though. No pressure at all. Holiday season and all. Take your time. Take your time. There's some pretty cool gears here, actually, when I take a look at it. Oh, oh no worries. No worries. I'll just keep looking at this stuff here. When you press it, we'll, we'll, we'll go on. Yeah. There we go. Hey, there's like little white things in there too. Oh, 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 thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. You'd be surprised how much this stuff really actually helps. And I'm also excited to have you here in the future. We got all kinds of cool stuff coming out and having you there is just gonna be that much better. All right, let's get our first couple of pieces and get this thing together. And just like that, we begin building our steampunk Santa Claus. The first thing we need to do is grab a couple of parts for our first page. We don't have that many pieces with this build, so I'm going to go ahead and break it down into pages for myself. Taking all of our parts out like this and kind of prepping everything might take some time, but believe me, it's worth it when it comes to actually following along with the instructions. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and get started with our legs. We begin by building multiple smaller assemblies. The instructions in this kit have pictures of all of our pieces coming together with red lines running through the center. That red line indicates the path of the screw going through our parts. I like to start working from the screw and then add all of our pieces on one by one until I get to the nut. One thing I noticed right away with this build is the washers that come with this kit allow the joints to move easier than in the past kits we've built. With these washers, I wonder how easily it will pose later. As we move along, it's important to notice that most of what we have built needs to be done twice and mirrored. How many of each assembly we need is actually indicated by these stars followed by a number. In this case, we need three left and three right. That sounds easy, but for some reason, I didn't catch on to this right away and had to go back and build some of these parts again when I needed them later. Not a big deal, but because of how the instructions are done, I did find it at times hard to follow them. Getting back to our legs though, we need to make sure that our parts are tight before we can call them done. Using the key or pliers to hold on to the nut, we can twist the screw with our screwdriver to get a good connection. And there, our legs are looking good. Let's move on to our body. Right away, we're dealing with bigger parts. So far, everything has been moving pretty smoothly, but now we have to get these bigger gears in place. These can be pesky because the edges get caught, causing some of our parts to not fit correctly together. You may need to move them around a little bit or possibly loosen them at times to get everything in place on your upper torso. For example, when attaching part 5, you might need to move the gears a little bit or widen part 5 to get it in place. We don't need to do that much bending here, but you do need to do just a little bit to get some of the parts together. The same can be said for the lower body as well. Just note that at any time if things aren't lining up, most likely something is in the wrong place. It can be easy to miss parts every once in a while, so always double check your work when things don't look right. A few more twists, and there we go, we're ready for our hands. We start with our fingers, and we begin by feeding this wire into part F29. I tried to get as much of the wire as I could in place before adding B13. This kit comes with a choice of two different kind of colored gloves, if you will, either clear or white. 
Personally, I like the clear ones, so we're gonna stick with those here. Don't forget to cut one of your fingers shorter than the rest of them. This is going to be your thumb. Much like our legs, the same stuff can be said when it comes for our arms. We're just trying to make giant hardware kebabs, and like our legs, we need to make sure that our parts are tight and mirrored. Now, by adding our gears, washers, and fingers together, our hands start to look pretty awesome. Okay, these are looking really good. Now we gotta put all this together. Here's where I found out I was missing some pieces from earlier, and I had to go back and rebuild them. It wasn't a big deal, but it was confusing, especially because I thought I had followed the instructions to the T. Again, it was just probably my dyslexia, but the instructions sometimes can be a little bit difficult to follow because of the way they're laid out. The washers especially almost sometimes blend in with the background, so it can be easy to miss them if you're not careful. Outside of that, when trying to line up all of our arms and our legs, sometimes it can be hard to get the screw through all of the pieces. I found that the screwdriver fits perfectly through our arms and leg parts so that if you needed to get those things lined up, if you take that screwdriver and push it through all the holes, you'll be able to get a really nice pathway and then be able to put the screw in a lot easier than trying to jostle it around through all of the parts. Looking pretty good. Let's see how the head and outfit goes on. And boom, there we have it, our steampunk Santa Claus all complete. Doesn't he look awesome? I think he does. And with this little guitar too, uh, even though it doesn't really play Christmas music, just plays a really awesome chime. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. But it also has a cool little light. Now, Groovers, I gotta say a lot about this little guy. He is awesome. If you've been looking to get into hardware models, I think this is a perfect one to start with. And there's multiple reasons for that. One, I think it because of these washers that are included with this build, it moves and poses so much easier than any of the other hardware models we've actually built here on the channel. I mean, normally you can pose the other ones, that's not a huge issue, but you always have to retighten everything. With this one here, you get a lot more forgiveness inside of the piece and I think it's because of those washers. A great add-on and one I look forward to seeing in other hardware models in the future. Now, not only is this build straightforward to put together, but because he's a really awesome steampunk Santa Claus, uh, in the future, if you wanted to change out the look of him, you very easily could. I mean, we just gotta take off this little hat here and uh, we'll take his head off. It's just a little magnet, which is a pretty cool thing. Take the scarf off. We'll take his shoes off as well. And when we do that, we got a base skeleton here for a really cool looking mech. And because he's a hardware model, we can add any upgrades that we want to him. We can add blasters. We can add those wings on from our Bengal Tiger. We can pretty much do anything we want with this little mech. And that's why I think he's such a neat little guy. Yes, the little light here is neat too. The fact that we can put pretty much any color that we want on there and use them as a lamp is a neat little thing. And I love the fact that we also have fading effects and flashing as well. Overall, I highly recommend this model. This has been one of my favorite this year, even though it's actually one of the simplest. Even the fingers here are great. I mean, the fact that we can bend these fingers and get some really nice articulation out of them, we can pose them in any way, we can make them point if we want to. It's a really neat effect. Because we have so much articulation here, there's so many opportunities for photos. And if you're into taking different kinds of photos with your models, this one here is definitely going to be a favorite. And now that I have this one here, I'm gonna see what I can do with some of my models 
and see if I can have them maybe popping up throughout the photos in the future. With all that said, the instructions could have been a little bit clearer, and because of that, I really can't recommend this build for younger audiences out there. However, if you have a couple of models under your belt and you're looking to get into the hardware models, I think this is a great place to start. Just remember to take it slow, and if you need to, go back and take a look at the video while you're building this to get through some more of the complex pieces. All right, Groovers, I had a great time building the steampunk Santa Claus with you. And if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. It really does help the algorithm tell everybody that you like the videos. And if you want to see future projects like this, press subscribe as well. We have all kinds of cool projects coming out in the new year, and I would love to have you there. If you're looking to pick this guy up, don't forget to head over to the Moyo store and use code Groove. You'll save yourself a little bit of money and also support the channel. Until next time, Groovers, keep building. All right now, little guy, I'm going to show you around the whole time machine. And also, it's a little bit lonely. Some things happened and, well, you're going to be the only guy around here for a little while.